Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve jump game 7 and this is pretty similar to the other jump games that you might have already solved. So the main difference with this problem between the other ones is that in this case we're given a range of jumps we can do. So before we were only basically given a max jump that we could do and then everything else, everything below that we were also able to do. But in this case, there's a minimum jump. For example, a minimum jump of two and max jump of three. That means we have to jump a distance of two or a distance of three. They basically said that zeros are positions we're allowed to land at and the ones are cactuses, which we are not allowed to land at. And since we're not allowed to land at ones, we're also not allowed to jump from ones. So we do have to keep that in mind. If there weren't any ones in this input array, then it would be trivial, right? Basically, we would guarantee that we could reach the end of the input array. So now you can do this problem with dynamic programming, similar to how you can solve a couple of the other jump games, but that's going to give us an overall time complexity big O of n, where n is the number of positions. And times let's say j where j is the range of jumps we can do and it turns out we can actually do better we can cut this algorithm down to big o of n if we solve it with breadth first search and i'm going to go ahead and show you that breadth first search solution which is going to be big o of n time as well as big o of n space complexity so let's look at a couple different examples in both of these examples we're going to say that the minimum jump is two and the maximum jump is three so we know that we're starting here and this is always going to be a zero. Now it technically turns out that the end position might not be a zero. Obviously if it's a one, that means we have to return false. If it's a zero, then, then it's technically possible. So we know that from zero, we can jump to a couple spots, right? We can make a jump of two, which would land us over here. We can also make a jump of three, which would land us over here, right? So basically in our breadth for search, this is gonna be the next frontier, right? We're done with this position. Now we're gonna look at these positions we're going to start jumping from here so let's start with this one right well it turns out it's a one so we can't jump from here at all right so we're not even going to try but next we're going to look at this position it's a zero so technically we can jump from here so let's do the same thing that we just did a jump of two which will land us here and a jump of three which is going to land us here so then you know we're going to look at these two positions we're not quite yet at the result right this is the goal that we're trying to reach but we're not quite there we're going to look at this well it's a one so we can't jump from here we're going to look at this it's also a one so we can't jump from there either so in this case, we've determined that we cannot reach the result. Now, let me just change this example slightly. I'm going to change this zero in, change that one into a zero just to illustrate why we can do this in big O of n time if we're doing breadth first search because we're not going to revisit the same values twice and we can do that with breadth first search and we're going to basically maintain what is the farthest position we have so far reached which is going to allow us to not revisit the same values multiple times. So since we're using breadth first search, we are going to be using a queue structure, but I'm not really going to show you too much because I think it's pretty self-explanatory how the queue is going to be structured as we go through the problem. But we are going to be maintaining one other variable farthest, which is going to tell us what's the farthest index we have reached and added to our queue so far so that we don't end up repeating values in our queue, right? Because if we do repeat values in our queue, then the time complexity is going to get to big O n squared. And we want to try to keep it big O of n if you actually want to pass this on leak code. Even though personally, I think if this is a medium problem, n squared should be good enough, but for some reason it isn't on leak code. But so initially the farthest is just going to be zero, right? Because we're starting at zero. So we know from zero, we're going to make a jump of two or we're going to make a jump of three. And I forgot to update this. So this is going to be zero. That's what's going to be different about this input array. So I added the indices of each value up above because that's what we're going to be using for farthest. And so when, when you know we're starting here, we're starting at index zero, right? And we're gonna go from index zero plus two all the way to index zero plus three. The way I'm getting these is basically from our minimum and maximum jump, right? Because we know that's what the next layer of our breadth first search is gonna look like, right? Zero plus two all the way to zero plus three, right? These positions, right? And when you look at the indices two and three, it does match up with what we have here. So this is our next layer. Now let's look at the first index, right? So this is index two. 
it's a zero. So therefore we are allowed to jump from here. Where are we gonna jump to? We're gonna jump from index two, right? Plus the minimum jump of two, all the way to index two, plus the max jump that we can do, which is three, right? So we're gonna basically go from here to index four and index five, right? So that's gonna be our next layer. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, but before we even jump to this next layer, since we've reached this layer already, what we can say is the farthest index we've reached now is three. So instead of zero, we can say it's three, right? This is basically the farthest we have reached so far. And so since the next positions we're trying to reach, you can see two plus two is four and two plus three is five. And since these are brand new positions, right? These positions are greater than the farthest we've reached so far, right? So technically, yes, we are gonna add these positions as well to our queue. Okay, so now that we have reached these positions, let's take a look at the new farthest that we've reached, right? We can clearly see that so far we have reached index five. Now, since these are ones, we're not actually gonna be jumping from them, but we do wanna remember that we have reached all the way to index five. So now the farthest we have reached so far is actually index five. And so by the way, we've already jumped from this position. We've already jumped from this position. Now we're trying to jump from this last position of this layer. So we know that this is index three, right? So three plus the minimum jump of two is where we're gonna be jumping to, plus as well as three plus the max jump, which is three. So we're gonna be jumping to index five all the way to index six, right? So from here, you can say that we're jumping to index five and index six. But wait a minute, we can clearly see we've already reached index five, right? So in reality, we want to actually skip this, right? So when we say we're gonna be jumping to index five and to index six, we actually wanna say, we wanna say we actually wanna start at farthest plus one. So, so, you know, instead of having this as being a five, I want this to be five plus one because the farthest we've reached so far is five. We wanna skip five. So we wanna start at five plus one, which is six, right? So really what we're saying is we're only going to be jumping to index six. So notice how we had a five here. Nope, that's gonna be a six. This is a six as well. So really we're only, from, from this index three, we're only jumping to index six because that's the only addition that we can add, right? So, and once we've done that, we can also update our farthest reached to six. And we can say, okay, we have visited this value now, right? Basically, we don't wanna be adding this, this index five to our queue twice and we don't even want to be looking at it twice we don't even want to look at what value happens to be there twice and so at this point you can see we're gonna have three values in our queue right three indexes in our queue and yes we're always going to be doing them from left to right basically first in first out just like you know a queue normally would be so we're gonna have inde indices four five and six we're gonna look at four well it happens to be a one so we can't jump from there Look at five, it happens to be a one, we can't jump from there. Look at six, it happens to be a one, we can't jump from there. At this point, everything in our queue is going to be empty, right? Where we have popped everything, but we still were not able to reach the last index and we have nothing left in our queue, so we have no choice but to return false. So I think you probably do know how to do a breadth first search on this array. I think the main trick that most people will have forgotten about is to maintain the farthest that we've reached so far to eliminate the repeated work to get this problem to be a linear time solution as well as linear memory solution. That being said, let's jump into the code. I bet you probably already know how to do it now though. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be having a queue, which in Python is gonna be a deck and we're gonna be maintaining the farthest value. So that deck is initialized with a single value and that's gonna be a zero because that's gonna be the starting position for us. And the farthest reached is also gonna be zero initially. And we're just gonna to continue to we're gonna to continue to make jumps until our queue is empty. If our queue is non-empty, we're gonna pop from it. So queue.pop left. Let's get that index that we have popped. We know we're gonna be jumping. From i, we're gonna be jumping to values, right? What's the first value we're gonna be jumping to? Well, of course, it's gonna be i plus the minimum jump, right? 
That's the closest value we can jump to. But what happens if i plus min jump is something that we've already jumped to? Then we would want to skip it, wouldn't we? That's where our farthest comes in. We're always, the, the, the first jump we're going to make is always going to have to be a new jump. We can guarantee it's a new jump by taking the maximum of this as well as maximum of farthest plus one because farthest is a point that we've already reached, a new point would be farthest plus one. And so we're just gonna be iterating through all the possible jumps that we could make from starting at this index i. So j in range from the start that we just calculated all the way until the end. Now what's the end gonna be? Well, it would be i plus max jump, right? But what happens if this i plus max jump is out of bounds? So it's possible it could be out of bounds, right? So what we're gonna do to make sure it's not out of bounds is we're gonna take this and take the minimum of this as well as the length of s. And actually to this, we are gonna add a plus one. The reason being in Python, basically the end range is always non-inclusive. So in Python, the ending index is always non-inclusive, which is why we're adding this plus one to it because we definitely do want to jump to I plus max jump. So to make sure we do, we're just adding a plus one. We're gonna be jumping to these positions. So we do wanna check if that position, so S of J, if this is the character zero, only then are we gonna be adding to our queue. So if it is, then we're gonna to add to our queue that index J. What we're saying is that index J can be reached, therefore we're adding it to our queue. Now what happens if index J happens to be the goal that we're trying to reach? In that case, then we can just immediately return true, right? So if J equals length of S minus one, that's the last index, right? If that happens to be the case, then we return true immediately. If not, then we continue. Now, don't forget, after all of this is said and done, we do want to update our farthest reached, which is basically just going to be i plus the max jump. And if we never end up adding the last index to our queue, that means we'll never be, then we, that means we never reached the last index. And if our entire loop executed and we still didn't, then we have no choice but to return false. So that is the entire code. As you can see, it does work. It doesn't seem like it's super efficient, but it is a linear time solution and linear memory solution. So I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.